Apollo program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with On the Road to Pismo Beach. <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, once Jell-O has become a favorite dessert in any family, it usually stays a family favorite from then on. Every day we get letters from folks telling us how they've been enjoying Jell-O for years and enjoying it more and more all the time. And there's a reason for this, too. Jell-O is just so downright delightful that once you try it, no other dessert ever seems quite so gay and beguiling, quite so rich in rare, tantalizing flavors as Jell-O. And another reason why Jell-O is such a year-after-year -year favorite in most homes is because it can be served in so many different ways, using Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Incidentally, if you haven't tried strawberry and raspberry Jell-O recently, do so real soon. Both are now better than ever with a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is something mighty distinctive, a truly unique goodness. Why not enjoy a grand dessert made with bright, tempting Jell-O tomorrow? on the road to Pismo Beach, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that last Monday, a great and well-deserved honor was bestowed upon our illustrious Master of Ceremony. Oh, Don, do you have to tell everything? For many years now, the outstanding stars of Hollywood have been selected to inscribe their footprints in the forecourt of Grauman's Chinese Theater as a tribute to their supreme artistry. Don, please, I'm so flustered. So without further ado, I bring you the latest celebrity to achieve this great distinction, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, your introduction was awfully sweet, but I wish you hadn't brought the subject up. It might make people think I'm hammy. Well, Jack, it was a grand tribute, and I feel that our listeners should know about it. True, Don, but it makes me feel so darn uncomfortable. Now, I really didn't want you to mention the honor accorded me at Grauman's Chinese last Monday at 2 p.m. before a crowd estimated by the police at over 3,000. I mean, it, it happened, it's over, now let's forget it. But, Jack, there isn't the slightest reason... Now, now, Don, there must be other things to talk about. So, uh, let's change the subject, shall we? <laughs> now, just a minute, Jack. There isn't the slightest reason why you should be embarrassed over this wonderful compliment. Well, maybe so, Don, but Mr. Still... Grauman must have thought a lot of you to suggest adding your footprints to such a distinguished group. I know, Why, but... Jack, a great artist like you should realize... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, hello. Uh, what's that, Don? <laughs> a great artist like me should what? How are you, Mr. Wilson? He's fine, he's fine. Sit down. <laughs> I... 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 I should realize what, Don? You should realize that... Uh... Oh, darn it, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, you had it on the tip of your tongue. Concentrate. I, I, I should realize what? Now, uh, let's see. Uh... Hiya, Jackson. Are you on the beam tonight? Uh, quiet, Phil. Don is trying to think of something. Uh, I, I should realize what, Don? Uh... Oh, it slipped my mind, Jackson. We might just as well forget it. Well, that's a fine how do you do. <laughs> Don, we were talking about me putting my footprints in the cement in front of Grauman's Chinese Theater. Oh, yeah, I read about that. You know, Jackson, this was a big week for the both of us. What do you mean? Well, at night school, I received a great tribute. I got a gold star for spelling. Oh. Congratulations, Phil. That's terrific. Thank you. That's Thank well, you, Mr. Harris. Congratulations. Thanks. Mm. I think that gold star was footprints. <laughs> so you're an honor student, eh, Phil? Yeah. I was the only guy in the class that could spell Mississippi. Well, that's a toughie. Let's hear you spell it now. Okay. Hold my coat, Dennis. <laughs> spell it with your coat on. Go ahead, Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 oh, very good. Now spell river. R-I-V-B-E-R. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. 
Uh, Phil, uh, you can now take that gold star and paste it back on a Hennessy bottle. <laughs> no kidding, you ought to quit. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing in particular. We're just fooling around. What's the matter? Didn't your writers prepare anything this week either? You mean mink and schmink? <laughs> no, they said they needed a vacation, so they uh, went to Catalina Island to write the program. Did they send you any material? No, but this morning I got a wire from them. It said, uh, have just pinned script on Seagull. Watch for it. <laughs> Those guys are always going someplace. Remember the time you sent them out for a hot tamale and they went to Mexico City? <laughs> Do I? That tamale cost me $800 and it was ice cold when I got it. <laughs> oh, well, we'll manage. We did last week. Say, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. Uh, how, how about a song? Okay. Say, Miss Livingston, did you hear about Mr. Benny at Grauman's Chinese Theater? Hear about it? I was there. All right, Dennis, let's have your song. Talk about laughs. Who's talking about laughs? Sing, Dennis. What Sorry. happened, Mary? Well. <laughs> 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 well, Jack oh. and I went to a matinee at the Chinese last Monday, and they were fixing the sidewalk there. All right, they were fixing the sidewalk. And Mr. Grauman happened to be standing at the box office. Yeah. So Jack went up to him and said, Mr. Grauman, as long as you've got all this wet cement here, how about paying a tribute to my supreme artistry? Now, wait a minute. So Mr. Grauman said, what do you mean? And Jack said, you know, make with the footprints. <laughs> he said that to me. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Wait, wait a minute now, Jackson. We want to hear this. Oh. Yeah, what happened, Barry? <laughs> well. So without waiting for an answer, Jack jumped in in the wet cement and disappeared. <laughs> Disappeared? Yeah, they were filling in a manhole. <laughs> well, it's still a wonderful tribute, and I'm proud of it. Now, let's have your song, Dennis. Okay. Say, what's that in your ear, Mr. Benny? Cement. Now, go ahead and sing. <laughs> Mr. Grauman pays a little tribute to my supreme artistry, and everybody's jealous. <laughs> sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, 
the Benny Hungry Hollywood Harlequins will present their version of that... Hey, very... wait a minute, Jackson. I thought you said your writers didn't work this week. Uh, that seagull came in while Dennis was singing. <laughs> Uh, the Benny Harlequins will present their version of that sensational Warner Brothers picture. That masterpiece of human emotion. That gripping melodrama of the sidewalks of New York. City for Conquest. Uh, thank you, Warner Brothers. Now, um... Now, in this, in this epic, and nice of them to come all the way from Burbank. <laughs> now, in this epic, I will play the part as portrayed by James Cagney on the screen. That of a rough and tough kid who fights his way through the slums and grows up to be a prize fighter. And Mary... Why, Jack, how can you play that part? You're not the Jimmy Cagney type. I'll handle it. Now, Mary... Imagine you playing a prize fighter. That's just silly. Oh, I'll do all right. Now, Mary... But, Jackson, you ain't tough enough to be Jimmy Cagney. It ain't believable. <laughs> well, I'll try it anyway. Uh, now, Mary... Mr. Harris is right. You're not tough enough. Oh, yeah? Put him up, Dave. <laughs> Put up your dopes. I'll show you who's not tough enough. Oh, Jack, calm down. Why pick on Dennis? Well, you know how excitable I am. <laughs> I guess I lost my head. Sorry, kid. Can I put my dukes down now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, uh, <clears throat> now my name will be Danny, and Mary, you're going to be my girlfriend, Peggy. You know the part Ann Sheridan played, and you're madly in love with me. Why can't I play Carol Lombard's part? She wasn't in the picture. That's what I mean. <laughs> Mary, you're either going to be madly in love with me or infatuated with the May Company. <laughs> now, Phil. <laughs> Phil. Uh, you're going to be Eddie, my kid brother. A frail, artistic sort of fellow whose only interests are his books and his great love of music. Yeah? Yeah, you're high-strung and delicate, Phil. And your forehead suggests deep intellect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You grow up to be a great composer and finally conduct your own symphony at Carnegie Hall. At last, the part that fits me. <laughs> Phil, it's just that we're stuck. Uh, that part fits you like a mail-order suit made by a nearsighted tailor for a couple of other fellas. <laughs> uh, now, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, you have one of the most important parts in our play. You are the narrator, and you symbolize the spirit of a great metropolis. In fact, Don, you are New York. He ought to take a little weight off his Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Now, this play, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, Phil, how about playing... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bimmy, this is Rochester. I'm sorry, Rochester, I'm busy. You're gonna be busier than that. I'm quitting. <laughs> quitting? What's the trouble now? It's about that mechanical man Mr. Billingsley made. You mean the robot? Yeah, he's breaking up everything in the house. You know that big grandfather's clock we got in the hall that runs so good? Yes. Well, Tempest has fusioned it for the last time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, that, that clock was very expensive. I tried to stop him, but he whammed me right on top of the head. On top of the head? Why, that robot is made of iron. Did he hurt you? I won't need collars no more. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, I told you before, there are buttons on that robot to control him. All you have to do is sneak up behind him and press the buttons. That's how I got my neck shortened. <laughs> Now, Rochester. Just call me Turtle. <laughs> now, Rochester, I don't want that mechanical man roaming around the house. Where is he now? He's in the kitchen. I think he's that way about the electric refrigerator. <laughs> now, 
Now that's just silly. A robot has no emotions or feelings. He hasn't even got a personality. He has now. He's wearing your toupee. <laughs> well, take it off of him. Now, Rochester, this is no time for joking. I'll be home right after the program. Meanwhile, tell Mr. Billingsley to keep that robot in his own room. Okay. What was that? My neck just came out. So long, boy. <laughs> so long. Play, Phil. I wish Mr. Billingsley would take a trip somewhere on his magic carpet. played by Phil Harris and his Sunset and Vine Orchestra. <laughs> Sunset meaning they are playing right here on Sunset Boulevard, and Vine meaning they are just clinging to their job. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our sensational melodrama, City for Conquest, Curtain, Music. Our scene, ladies and gentlemen, is New York. New York, the greatest metropolis in the world. Millions of people gasping for life and air, fighting, biting, clawing away for a place in the sun. New York! Gee, that's wonderful. And now, we take you to the east side. The attic room shared by Danny, the truck driver, and his brother, Eddie, the young musical genius. As the scene opens, Eddie, with an inspired look on his delicate face, is seated at his drum composing his Symphony of New York. Listen. <laughs> no. No, I still haven't got it. I don't feel that ending, but I can't give up. I must finish my symphony. Ah, I have a thought. That's it! Now I've got it! Oh, that's it! That's the voice of New York! Hello, Eddie. How's me kid brother? Oh, hello, Danny. Why aren't you working this afternoon? Ah, me boss started an argument, so I slugged him. And a couple of cops came along, and I slugged them, too. I slug everybody. Oh, Danny, you're always fighting. Will you ever pick up good manners by yourself, or do I have to learn you? <laughs> hmm. It ain't no use, brother. I'm just naturally tough. How's your symphony coming along? Oh, I fear the masses will never like it. It's much too highbrow. Let me hear what you've done so far, will you, brother? Very well. I call my composition Manhattan, uh, Al, um... Uh, al um... Allegory, Manhattan <laughs> Allegory. Let's hear it, brother. All right. I'll start with the part you like, Danny. The part I call East River, with all its proud and passionate beauty, with all its shrieking jungle cries for life and sun. Gee. And I carry on the theme until I've told the complete story of New York, with its wealth and power and everlasting loveliness. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's, let's hear it, brother. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I can see it all. 
the Empire State Building, the tenements downtown with the laundry hanging out the window. Oh, boy. And there's Central Park in the moonlight. It's winter and the snow is falling. And there's the Winter Garden game. Holy smoke. Olsen and Johnson are still there. Oh, Eddie, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You're a genius. But what's, what's that cowbell for? Well, that symbolizes the burning of New York. You know, when Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicked over the lantern. <laughs> that was Chicago. Oh, brother. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with New York. Okay, I'll take it out. <laughs> but otherwise, it's beautiful. I could listen to that forever. Oh, hello, Peggy. Hello, Danny. Get that girl out of here. A composer has no time for women. Hmm. Well, Eddie, at least you can say hello to me, sweetheart. Hello, Eddie. Hello, babe. What you doing later? Eddie! <laughs> hello is enough. Gee, you look pretty tonight, Peggy. Is that a new scoit? Yeah, this is a new scoit. Is that a new shoit? Yeah. <laughs> this is a new shoit. How do you like my shoit? Too toyed around Detroit. <laughs> well, so much for dad. Say, Eddie, how's your symphony coming along? Gee, Peggy, you ought to hear it. Gee, it's beautiful. Beautiful, yes. But who's ever going to hear it? Where will I get the money to complete my masterpiece? Oh, he's so high strung. <laughs> Might as well tear it up. I'll never achieve my ambition. Never, never, never. <laughs> Poor kid, he's so sensitive. Also unbelievable. Yeah. But don't cry, brother. I'll get you the money. I know what I'll do. I'll be a prize fighter. There's a lot of dough in that. A prize fighter? Oh, don't do that, Danny. No, no, Danny, you mustn't. You'll get your nose broken. With all this cement in it? <laughs> don't be silly. Your music belongs to the wild, Eddie, to the wild. And I'm gonna see that day gets it. <laughs> Months pass, and Danny the truck driver becomes Kid Samson, the sensational newcomer to the ring. After an amazing series of knockouts, he is now the leading contender for the championship of the world. We now find Kid Samson in the gymnasium, training for the big fight. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. How am I doing, Eddie? Oh, Danny, I wish you wouldn't fight. I'm doing it for you, brother. Hey, Lefty, you think I'm in good shape now? Yeah, but now listen, kid. This guy you're fighting tomorrow night is plenty tough. And you gotta know how to handle him. Don't worry, I'll moiter him. Now, don't be too sure of yourself, kid. The champ's got a habit of leading with a satin portrait, and he's liable to hit you in a saddle region of several button watch <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'll remember that. And when you duck, he comes back with a little satin force. Watch out for that cast of sulfur. You know, he's liable to fight you with a satin force to celebrate to the kidneys. <laughs> I'll watch out for that. I'll get in close. Now, look, you can't be too careful. I remember in Chicago, he was fighting a guy in a cellular faucet. Yeah? One, two, three to face. He stood back with a cat. Traffic syndrome? Get him in a cellular faucet, started at eight. He pulled him in state, then reached. I've seen him. <laughs> okay, maybe you're right. Give me a rub down, Lefty. I don't know where that bottle of alcohol is. You don't? It was here yesterday. Where is it? I broke it. I can't stand alcohol. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake! <laughs> Hey, what's that sticking out of your hip pocket? That's for after the play. <laughs> Give me that. Here, Lefty, rub me down. Now, look, where'll you take your shower? There's no use celebrating brushes, is there? <laughs> no, I'll do it later. Well, look who's here. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Samson. That's Kid Samson. With gray hair? <laughs> that don't make no difference. I'm as hard as nails. Get a load of this chest and feel these muscles. Where? Right there on the arm. Look at that bulge. That's a muscle. Where? I don't see it. Right up. Now you scared it. It's gone. <laughs> well, I gotta leave you now, Peggy. I'm gonna get me rubbed down. Gee, Danny, you ought to get some new trunks. What's wrong with these I'm wearing? They're so long I can hardly see your garters. They're all right. Say, Danny, who are you fighting tomorrow night? The champ. 
And he's one of the toughest mugs in the ring. What's his name? Dennis Killer Day. That guy's dynamite. Oh, Danny. I know you're doing this all for me, but I can't let you go through with it. Give it up, Danny. Please. Please. <laughs> oh, stop crying. <laughs> stop, will you? I want my rubbing alcohol. <laughs> all right, here. Come on, Lefty, let's go. Pull up your trunks, kid. I want to tie your shoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are a little droopy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clem McNulty coming to you from the ringside of Madison Square Garden. We're about to witness the championship fight between Killer Day, holder of the title, and Kid Sampson, the contender. The killer is already in his corner, and here comes Kid Sampson, nervously pulling his trunks up. Whoops, he stumbles. He's up again. And these trunks, they are too long. Get me suspenders, Lefty. Now, before the fight begins, we'll have a word from each of the contestants. First, Kid Sampson, the challenger. I'll moiter him. And now, the champion, Killer Day. I'll get killed. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. The referee has just given the boys their final instructions. They're standing in their own corners, nervously awaiting the bell. And there it is. The boys meet in the center of the ring, and Killer Day leads with a right to the jaw. Ooh. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. Watch it, will you? I got me glasses on. Wait till I take them off. Kid Sampson removes his glasses. Ooh. And counters with a left to the referee. He can't see a thing without him. Oh, yeah? Where's that killer? I'll moiter him. Kid Sampson is staggering around, and Killer Day is moving in for a knockout blow. Ooh. The killer throws another one. Ooh. And another one. Ooh. And another one. Ooh. Ooh. Kid Sampson is down, and it looks like a knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, while Kid Sampson is in dreamland, let me tell you about Jell-O's new dessert recipe book. This interesting book contains 365 recipes and suggestions, one for each day of the year. It can be obtained by sending 10 cents to Don Wilson, Battle Creek, Michigan. I thank you. Ooh, let me add that guy. I'll slug him. I'll moiter him. It's too late. You're in your dressing room. Oh, yeah. Darn that, Dennis. He hit me right in my big blue eye. Ooh. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. Sorry, nothing. Now, listen here, Dennis. You knew very well this was a play and that I was supposed to knock you out. Well, I'm Irish. I don't care what you are. Hey, what about my symphony? The heck with your symphony. Dennis Day, I'm not going to forget this. There's no excuse. You saw the picture. Jimmy Cagney's supposed to knock out the champion. That's the only way he can get the money to help his brother. And what happens? The minute my back is turned, you hit me right square in the eye. Now, this is the last time I'm... During the past 40 years, ladies and gentlemen, Jell-O has become increasingly famous as the name of America's favorite gelatin dessert. And now, today, those big red letters are acquiring new fame on the Jell-O pudding package. Jell-O puddings, as you know, are the most recent members of the Jell-O family. Swell, ready-prepared puddings with the same high quality you've come to expect of every product that bears the name Jell-O. Jell-O puddings are available in three grand old pudding flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. And you'll find each one full of rich, creamy goodness, the last word in smooth, mellow delight. Jell-O puddings take only a few minutes to make, and they sell for the same low price as Jell-O. So tomorrow when you order Jell-O, order Jell-O puddings too. And in buying both, look for those big red letters on the box. The name Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. And you make sure of getting the finest dessert enjoyment every time you ask for Jell-O, your password to pleasure. This is the last number of the 16th program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Ooh, how does my eye look, Mary? Let's go to Ciro's and get a steak for it. Okay, I'll take it out of Dennis's salary. Good night, folks.